Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. We do apologize for the late start, start uh, that is 8.45. It's still late, but because the Maghrib is pushing a bit forward, and then inshallah our classes will come a bit earlier. So we will maybe start from later on 7 o'clock. So definitely from two weeks time for this class will be 7 o'clock bi idhnillah. So we could finish by Maghrib time and that would be better so that we could be as well doing uh, the far and the Taraweeh and all of that. Uh, we are on to the book which is Al-Adab Al-Mufrad and I would like Hassan to, to read for me without putting your video, Jazakallah Hassan, just to make sure that the internet will not be affected. So go ahead from dating the class from 8 46, that's what the last time we had it. 846, Jazakallahu Khairan. Wa Jaza. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa ala man tabi'a hudahum ila yawmid deen. Tonight, on the night of the 26th of Sha'ban, 1441, we are resuming our book, Al-Adab Al-Mufrad, A Code for Everyday Living, The Example of the Early Muslims by Imam Bukhari. Tonight's chapter is um, 374. May an idol worshipper be called by a kunya. Carry on, Sheikh. Okay, Hadith 846. Usama bin Zaid said, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrived at a gathering that included Abdullah bin Ubay uh, Salul. Uh, this was before Abdullah bin Ubay announced being a Muslim. He said, Abdullah bin Ubay ibn Salul. Abdullah bin Ubay ibn Salul. This was before um, Abdullah bin Ubay announced being a Muslim. He said, do not disturb us in our gathering. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Sa'ad bin Ubadah and said, Sa'ad, did you not hear what Abu Hubab said? Abu Hubab, he meant Abdullah bin Ubayb bin Salul using his kunya. So what did he say as, uh, when, he, when he said before he, said he embraced Islam, he said to him, what, please, I'll say that again. He said, do not disturb us in our gathering. <laughs> the chapter title, Is it permissible for us to make to give kunya to the person with mushrik? The mushrik is the non-Muslim. And uh, the non-Muslim, they do have sometimes, we call them nicknames. Are we allowed to give them the nicknames? This nickname is, usually it is the case, is linked either to something that he's famous with or is to do to, with one of his sons. But... This nickname of calling the person by the eldest of his sons is not known amongst the Westerns, the uh, Britishers, for example, or the Europeans. They're not known to be named by the eldest sons of theirs. <laughs> Whereas the Islam is always rotates around the family and is important as well, the person that is being, to being given a kunya. And the kunya is to be given even to the child when he's born, before he takes a child or he puts a child. And sometimes the person would have a kunya of Abu something, yet he hasn't got that person like Abu Bakr, he hasn't got Bakr and Umm Abdullah Aisha, she did not have Abdullah. The mushrik here, which has been uh, yeah, in the hadith, which is the mushrik Abdullah ibn Ubayy ibn Salul. Abdullah ibn Ubayy ibn Salul is the leader of hypocrisy. He was in the Medina and he was to be crowned as a king over the Ansar, the Aus and the Khazraj. But all his dreams were destroyed and shattered as soon as the Prophet ﷺ had arrived into the Medina and all the people had announced the Prophet of Allah is to be the person who is the head of the Medina and he's the Prophet of Allah. So all his dreams were destroyed. <coughs> so here we have Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu. He said that the Prophet ﷺ came to a gathering. In that gathering, Abdullah ibn Ubayy ibn Salul. This is the hypocrite man. And it says here, before. Abdullah ibn Ubay embraces Islam. How come? So if he's a mushrik before he embraces Islam, does that mean that he embraces Islam later on? No. He pretended that he embraced Islam. He's a kafir, 
and stayed uh, as a kafir and he died as a kafir and he was killed as a kafir uh, Abdullah ibn Ubayni Salun sorry he was not killed he, was, he died as a kafir he was buried as a kafir but he pretended to be a Muslim so he looks like Sheikh with a beard a topi with a thobe he looks like the Muslims so that's before he pretended that he embraced Islam so when the Prophet as soon as he came to the Medina he passed by one of these gatherings okay and when he came to these gatherings Abdullah he was there and he was talking to his people so he said to the Prophet La tu'dina fi majlisina. La tu'dina, do not disturb us do not harm us do not do not show us your presence we, we, you're not welcome basically that's a word that you deserve to be killed for it if you are talking to the Prophet because it's an announcement of disbelief but he's still a disbeliever he said before he embraced Islam and also a word which shows the unwelcoming to the Prophet وسلم, and that's why his son who's named also Abdullah is the name of Abdullah the son of Abdullah he was a companion and after the battle of the Muraysiyah Bani al-Mustaliq he had asked the Prophet وسلم, to go and kill his father because he was so bad to the Prophet when he said, when we go to Medina, the person who is mighty will expel the person who is humiliated. The one who is uh, honored, he will expel and kick out the one who is Mina, which is the Prophet of Allah, he means. And that's a word of kufr. But the Prophet of Allah said to him, don't kill your father. Actually, be righteous to him. Be good to him. But he did not let go. The son of his, he went to the Medina before his father and he said, had it been that the Prophet of Allah had gave me permission or you will not enter the Medina until the Prophet of Allah gives you permission to enter. To show you who is the one, is the Mina, and who is the honorable. He's talking to his father. Because the Prophet of Allah for us is dearer than anything. Dearer than our parents, than ourselves. So the Prophet wasallam, he went to Sa'd ibn Ubadah. Sa'd ibn Ubadah is the leader of the Khazraj. And he said to him, because Abdullah ibn Bayyim Salud, he is from the Khazraj. He is from the Khazraj. And he was to be crowned over the house of the Khazraj before the Prophet of Allah came to the Medina and he destroyed all his dreams. That is the kunya of Abu Hubab, uh, the kunya of Abdullah ibn Bayyim Salud. So he called him by his kunya. And he was a Kafir at that time, before he pre pretended to become a Muslim. Can't you, did you hear what Abu Hubab, I mean, shall I tell you what he said to me, Abu Hubab, and he meant Abdullah ibn Ubayd ibn Salul, that's the whole chapter is all about. Now, we do have a narration, which is also addition to this uh, narration, and it is also in the Sahih, of uh, Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. In this narration, we find that the Sa'd ibn Ubadah, he had explained to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi uh, why Abdullah ibn Bayyid Salu has said this. He said, Messenger of Allah, uh, I sacrifice my father for you. Please pardon him and forgive him by the one who sent upon you the book that is by Allah. Allah brought you the haq, the truth, which he had revealed unto you. And the people of Medina, they had almost crowned him before you came. But when Allah brought you with this haq, then Abdullah ibn Ubayy ibn Salul, as soon as you came in, shariqa bidhalik, meaning it's like it stuck into his, 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 his throat. It's like a you know, person is like, you know, he, he, he hates somebody, he's stuck in his throat like a dagger. He can't take it out, he can't swallow it. He takes it out, he's injured, he swallowed, he's dead. Okay? That is why he says, Abdullah, that's what, that's what he said to him. That is why Sa'd ibn Ubayy he said, that is why Messenger of Allah Basically, he had said what he had said. So the Prophet Sallam forgave him. So the whole chapter is all about that we are allowed to say a nickname, the kunya of the mushrik. Go into the following chapter, please. Chapter 375. A kunya for a child. Hadith 847. Anas said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to visit us. And I had a young brother who used the kunya of Abu Umair. He had a sparrow which he played with and then it died. The Prophet ﷺ came in and saw that he was sad. When he asked, what is wrong with him? He was told, his sparrow has died. The Prophet said, Abu Umair, 
What has happened to the little sparrow? Right. This hadith is in a chapter called Al Kunya to the Sabi, to give Al Kunya a nickname to the child. And he brings the hadith, which is hadith Abi Umayr, and that is the son of Abu Talha, which we have mentioned actually today in our lecture. And this hadith was mentioned in a chapter which is jesting and joking with the child. And hadith number is 269. And also it was mentioned in another chapter in this book. Which is the, uh, the bird is in the cage, and it's uh, hadith number 384. So we have 269, 384, and also this one. So Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi looks at the hadith uh, itself and he puts it another in different chapters because in that hadith there is some benefits and fawaid. Now I remember I mentioned to my students here that Kul Abbas Ahmad ibn Ahmad. Al-Tabari, which is known to be Ibn Al-Qas, the one who died in 335 uh, after Hijrah. He was a muhaddith and he was a faqih, scholar of hadith and scholar of fiqh. He, uh, but basically at his time, that some of the people had sort of criticized the people of muhaddithin, the scholars of hadith, that they do narrate hadith which has no benefits. Like this one, they give an example. They narrate hadith, which has no benefit. So what is this hadith? The Prophet of Allah paid a visit to a little boy called Abu Umair, and he called him, Ya Abu Umair, what did the Nugayr little bird have done, which is in the cage? What is our benefit in that? Okay. So because he had heard this from the people, Ibn al-Qas had decided to make a treatise, little booklet, in which he had collected more or collected 60 benefits 60 uh, uh, benefits from this small hadith okay 60 benefits from this small hadith this hadith it has a story it means at the beginning of it that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to come to um sulaim and i think we talked just before the class about um sulaim um sulaim in the previous class that is used to be a basically uh, the, the, the foster aunt of the Prophet of Allah. She and the mother of the Prophet, uh, so she, she's the so she, she was the sister of the mother of the Prophet through fostering. Okay? She is an Um Haram. Um Sulaim and Um Haram both are to be maternal auntie of the Prophet Sallam through fostering. That explains how the Prophet Allah used to sleep in her house. And suckling, you know, makes Haram just like the birth. As the Prophet of Allah he said. So he had uh, the Prophet he came to Um Sulaim um, and he used to come to her and he he came as well, Yatawakka. Okay, so he tawakka, that means he's not really walking like in a way which has got pride in it, normal walk. And he used to sleep on in the bed of hers. And in then it's a long hadith, but anyway, in that hadith, it mentions there that the Prophet وسلم, he had prayed in there in, the, in, the, in their house and he had seen that boy which is the son of abu talha the one who married um sulaim and he said to uh, 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 the, the boy ya aba umair mada fa'ala an nughayr what did the nughayr do let's just in, take some of the advantages uh, sorry the benefits that he had said 60 benefits out of this hadith just to show these people who criticize the scholars of hadith that they are narrating hadith that don't have benefits. From those benefits, for example, he said that the person when he walks he should not be arrogant. Also, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had made uh, made it uh, known to us that the visit is the sunnah to visit somebody, and also that the person um, has to be humility, uh, humbleness. So the, this is the Prophet of Allah coming to Um Sulaim, and he's the president, the Prophet of Allah. Also, that he came without any guards. That's another benefit. He came without any guards. So there was nobody to, to guard him. Also, it is permissible for the person who's in charge, who's a leader, as well, to walk on his own. Also, that from the benefits that he used to come frequently to Um Sulaim. Also, from the benefits that when the Hakim, the leader, comes to one person, it doesn't mean there is favorism to him, and it's allowed. 
also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Abu Huraira, Zurghibban, Tazdal Hubban. Go to pay the visit to the person whom you love, but don't visit him every day. Make this a space that people will love you more. Okay? And also that to give a kunya to the children, like here, uh, Abu Umair, is to have a kunya for him, whose name is Abdullah, be called Abu Umair, and also to cuddle the children, to just with them. Also, and Nugair, uh, and, and Umair is like a rhyming, to take like a, he made it the first time to make a rhyme, which is not really uh, been uh, uh, aimed for, but it came to no problem to say something, and it came in a rhyming way. And also from the benefits is that the bird is allowed for us to lock him in the cage as long as we feed him. So all of those from the 60 and also in Hajar rahimahullah, he had increased those 60 to make them 100 or more. He had increased on those benefits. I think he made them 100 or 80, but he made even more benefits out of this little hadith. Right. So this is give a punya to the child Abu Ramir. 847. Chapter 376, having a kunya before having a child. Hadith 848, Ibrahim said, Abdullah gave al qama the kunya of Abu Shibl, before he, al qama had had a child. 849. 849, Ibrahim said, al qama said, Abdullah gave me a kunya before I had a child. Yeah. Abdullah here, yeah, when we say Abdullah, always in the hadith, it's mentioned Abdullah, it means Abdullah ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar, he will be said Ibn Umar. He will not be said Abdullah. If it's been Abdullah, mentioned like this, it means Abdullah, okay, Ibn Mas'ud. Allah ibn Mas'ud, he had students. He had Ibrahim, Ibrahim al Nakhai, a student, and also Al Qama, he's a student. So here, Abdullah, radiallahu anhu arda, he had given to Al Qama, his student, Akunya, which is Abu Shibl. Shibl uh, is the cup, the, 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 son, the cup of the lion. Shibl is the cup of the lion. It's called Shibl. Ya Aba Shibl. So he gave him the kunya. So this is al Qama himself saying as well that Abdullah, my teacher, had given me the kunya before I had a son. So before he had a son. And of course, the uh, proofs regarding giving a kunya for the children, you could see that from uh, chapter before, which is Ya Aba Umair, which is the son of uh, Abu Talha, he gave him Abu Umair. Uh, so here we have that we, we give the children the kunya. And this is a benefit when you give a kunya to the children. That's uh, the child, you know, when he's, you know, that he's being called like the adults. That gives him, I don't know, subhanAllah, the sunnah, the bark of the sunnah. This person thinks that he's, mashallah, he has been addressed in a very respectable way. But to give your children a kunya is from the sunnah. Now, Abu. Chapter 377, the kunya for woman, hadith 850. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, I went to the Prophet وسلم, and said, Messenger of Allah, you give your wives kunyas, so also give me a kunya. He said, adopt the kunya of your nephew, Abdullah. This hadith is unauthentic. But there is an the unauthentic, not all of it, but when it's she said, Messenger of Allah, you have given kunya to your wives. That is not authentic. Yes, the wives of the Prophet of Allah, they had kunya, but it's not the Prophet of Allah who gave them the kunya. So that that you have when she said, nisa akafaknini, that is, you're giving kunya to your wives, so give me kunya, that part is not authentic. Okay, and it's not authentic and it goes against the hadith, which is the following one, 851. Hadith 851. Um, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, Prophet of Allah, won't you give me a kunya? He said, use the kunya of your son, i.e. Abdullah bin Zubayr, the son of Aisha's elder sister, Asma. She was given the kunya of Umm Abdullah. Right. So this also is being narrated in Al-Musnad, you'll find it in Silsila Sahih of our Shaykh Al-Albani Rahimahullah, in which the hadith says that uh, Aisha, she said, O Messenger of Allah, 
uh, all your women, they have a kunya. But she did not say you have given kunya to your wives. No, all your wives have a kunya except for me, which is true. So the messenger of Allah, he said, okay, we'll go, have a kunya. You are Um Abdullah. So she was to be called Um Abdullah until she died. And she never gave birth to anything, any children. So she was called Um Abdullah and she never had Abdullah. Now, the hadith which says that Aisha, or which has been said that she had a, an abortion or a child who was born and he died, and she called him Abdullah, that is hadith batil. Batil means fabricated, no chain, and also lie. There is no such thing that Aisha she had given a child and he died. So there is no child called Okay, Abdullah for Aisha. She was called now with the son of her elder sister Asma. The elder son is Abdullah. So one narration says that take a kunya of your uh, of your uh, of the son of your uh, sister. Another one that is your son, because it shows here how close is the son of the sister. So the son of your sister is like your son. Son of your brother. It's like your son. Prophet ﷺ, he said, Al-Ammu Sinu Al-Walid. The uncle from the father's side is equal to the father. So the father is not there, the uncle will take over. So he's allowed to discipline the child and all of that. Al-Ammu Sinu Al-Walid. The same thing here. He said, take a, take a kunya of your son. So Abdullah ibn Zubair is considered her son and also because she looked after him. Aisha, she looked after Abdullah ibn Zubair. Radiallahu anhu. She looked after, because her sister, she got really old and she got blind as well. So she looked after him. She should consider him her own son. Now, and by the way, giving the kunya is better than these nicknames that is, you know, sir, okay, all of this. We can say, we say, a Sayyida, a Sayyid. Uh, Monsieur in French, huh? called Monsieur, huh? Mrs. Miss. It's better to give you, actually, Um Abdullah, Um Aisha, Um Yasmin, not Mrs. Miss, Monsieur, huh? all of these names. Okay? Allah Ta'ala Now. Chapter 378. One who gives a man a kunya by something or someone related to him. Hadith 852. Sahel bin Sa'ad said, the name that Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, liked the best was Abu Turab, father of dust, and he was happy when called that. Only the Prophet ﷺ gave him that name. One day he was cross with Fatima and went out and lay against the wall of the mosque. The Prophet ﷺ came to look for him and was told that he was leaning against the wall. The Prophet ﷺ went up to him and his back was covered with dust. So the Prophet ﷺ began to wipe the dust off his back and said, Sit down, Abu Turab, father of dust. Right, now this is the chapter which is giving a kunya to a person, which is with something that is, he's got it. He has it. So, like we have Dhul Yadain, the one with the long hands. Dhul Udunain, the one with the big ears. As long as he's not upset with that name. Okay, Dhul Udunayn. So this one is Prophet Allah said Abu Turab. I don't like the word uh, the father of dust. The dust is not his son. Abu it means the owner of dust. The, so when we say Abu Turab, that means the owner. So it's not doesn't mean all the time means the father of. Okay. So when we say, for example, Prophet Salam, he said that Ibn Zina la the one who is the son of Zina. Okay. Uh, it will, he will not enter paradise. It's not the son of Zina that is the one who is uh, uh, the son of fornication. Because it's not, it's not his fault, it's his parents. It's actually that the Ibn Zina that means like he is the one who fornicates all the time. So it becomes like he is being named by Ibn Zina. And we call as well somebody, for example, Egypt Umm Dunya, the mother of Dunya. She's not the mother, she gave birth to Dunya. That means if you want to find entertainment of Dunya, you go to Egypt, that's what they mean. So here Abu Turab means the owner of it, the one who has got the dust, basically. Sahih ibn Sa'ad said, Verily, 
it was the most beloved name unto me, uh, uh, that is Abu Turab. Sahar al Sabi said, In Kanat Ahab Asma Ali. So, what was the, the, the most beloved name to Ali? It was Abu Turab. That is his kunya. And he used to be happy whenever somebody calls him with it. And why? Because the Prophet of Allah needed him with that. Gave him that kunya. Prophet of Allah called him a Turab. The only one who called him Abu Turab is the Prophet of Allah. Why? That's the reason. He had a dispute with Fatima. Fatima is the daughter of the Prophet. That happens to be the wife of Ali. So he went to the masjid. And he went to the, as well, to the wall of the fence of the masjid, the wall of the masjid. Okay? And he slept there. Prophet he came to Fatima and he asked about. And she told him that she had a row with him. And this, this is, I'm talking about from another hadith I'm bringing here. He had a row with him. So he started looking for him. Where is he? So he found him. Okay. Uh, he didn't find him. He had actually asked somebody to look for him. This person went and he saw him in the masjid. He came to the Prophet and said, Messenger of Allah, he is in the masjid. This, this riwaya I'm saying, which is narration is in Sahih Imam Muslim. Okay. So he said, Messenger of Allah, he's in the masjid. So the Prophet of Allah came to the masjid and he came to him and he told him to get up. When he got up, his back was full of dust. So the Prophet he started, you know, taking the dust and wiping it like, you know, like that from his back. And he said, Ijlis, Ijlis, come on, sit down, Abu Turab. Sit down, Abu Turab. Sit down, Abu Turab. That's the kunya being given by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And basically, he's given that as like a, a, a gesture of uh, cuddling him. Okay? So imagine the Prophet of Allah is dusting Ali. He is doing that. Okay? And also giving him that kunya which makes him as well forget about the row that he is taking place between him and the Prophet Sallallahu daughter. He did not blame him. What have you done? Imagine that you are the father-in-law. And you went to your daughter and you... And your daughter, she said to you, know, he had a row with me, all of this. You would have come here, you would not really go and say, Abu Turab. He said, I'm going to put Turab on you. I'm going to put dust on you. Never mind. But the Prophet of Allah, okay, this is a very high manner from the Prophet of Allah, teaching us as father in laws what should we do? That is to be very soft, lenient, uh, 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 kind, okay? A gentleman, a gentle person with our sons of laws with our sons of laws. We have to be gentle. He is, the, uh, he is the husband of my daughter. I'm not going to take him as an enemy every time there's a row between him and my daughter. No. This is it will uh, make this love bond between them last for a long time. Instead of him coming, why did you do this? Why did you do that to my daughter? And then he is the father of the other son of laws, the, the father of your son-in-law, the real father. He will come take side as well with his son and then we'll end up with a divorce. Okay, now, following chapter, please. Chapter 379. How one should walk with great men. Hadith 853. Anas said, while the Prophet ﷺ was in a palm grove of ours, i.e. the palm trees belonging to Abu Talha, he went out for something. Bilal was walking behind the Prophet ﷺ. Sorry? He went out for something, it says, yeah? Yeah, went out for something. Wait. Okay. Bilal was walking behind the Prophet وسلم, instead of walking by his side. Bilal did this as a mark of respect. The Prophet وسلم, passed by a grave and stood until Bilal reached until Bilal reached him. He said, Woe to you, Bilal. Did you hear what I heard? He said, I did not hear anything. He said, the man in the grave be, is being punished. It was found out that the dead man in the grave was a Jew. Right. This says, how can you walk with those who are of uh, senior people? Senior people, people of knowledge, people of you know, like your is your sheikh, is your president, is your Khalifa. Okay, these people are senior people. Prophet of Allah, he was walking 
it was into one of the palm trees in the palm trees like a, I had an orchard and Tabarraz al Haji is actually wanted to relieve himself so and he, when, while he was going to his need what he wanted to do uh, Bilal radiallahu anhu started walking behind him just lightly not beside him does that say that with your, with your translation yeah yeah Hassan does it mention in translation that he used to he is beside not behind him not beside yeah, him he said Bilal was uh, walking behind the Prophet instead of walking by his side okay right okay so yeah. here again the Prophet went to the palm trees of Abu Talha and he wanted to to basically fulfill his need and Bilal he was was he was walking with him he was walking uh, basically just slightly behind and he doesn't want he's avoiding to be equalizing with him so the prophet them, while he was doing that he passed by a grain. now this whole chapter is only from that bit which is that the bilal did not go beside him exactly matching him just slightly behind to make give him an edge prophet will not pass by grain. and we stayed there until bilal joined him i mean just slightly and he joined him he was with him so he said to him, Wayhak, Bilal. Wayhak, remember, I said the difference between Wayhak and Waylak. Wayhak is woe to you, but you don't deserve it. It's like, look, look what is happening. Can you hear what I can you hear what I'm hearing? Can you hear what I'm hearing? He said, No, I can't hear anything. This question tells us that it is it is allowed, uh, universally speaking. That Allah might make somebody other than the Prophet to hear the punishment of a grave. And this happens uh, and happened to the companions at that time. They have seen even worse than that. One of them is Shahr ibn um, Al Hawshab ibn Awam, Al Awam ibn Hawshab, an, the companion. And he had seen when he was visiting a grave that the grave split open. And there was somebody came out of it looking like a donkey, braying like a donkey three times. Then he went down. It was after Asr time. It was next to him a very old woman and another woman as well, the other side. So he asked the other woman on the other side, What is happening? She said that every day since that person that dies, that freshly looks like a day or two or three, since that day he died, this person brave, he was cracked open. This person comes out like a donkey, brain three times. And he is the son of that old woman next to him. Because when she was talking to him and he was drunk, he said to her, you are braying like a donkey. So Allah Azza wa Jalla wanted to punish him for saying that. So this has been seen by companions. The hadith is authentic. Or how long does it stay there for, for one day after that or two days? But this has happened. And we have a number of incidents that were the uh, basically a companion or, or so that had, they had heard something. And that is why we say that if somebody had heard something like this, we cannot be lying, we cannot say truth about it. But there is Allah Azza wa Jal, He might make other, one person listen to something that other people can't listen to. It. But not all the time. It's not like by the power of a, of a button that you flick your button and that's it, you can be able to hear what is in the grave. No, I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about that it can happen that somehow that. Allah Jal wanted some certain people to hear the sound of those people in the grave, what happens to them. That's why the Prophet said, do you hear what I'm hearing? Because if, if, if he can't hear, there's no point of asking him. The Prophet will not ask him. So he's, the Prophet is hearing, and he said, no, I can't hear anything. He said, this man's grave is being punished. The punishment, how is the sound is a punishment. So when he said to him, can you hear what I'm hearing? That means, if he was able to hear, he will hear something. Listen to me. Something that will indicate to Anas radiallahu, to Anas radiallahu an, that this, sorry, to Bilal radiallahu, an, to Bilal radiallahu an, that this person is being punished. Again, what I'm saying. When Prophet Allah asked him, asked, can't you hear? Do you hear what I'm hearing? That means it is possible. May Allah make it to hear. Number one. Number two, if he is able to hear, he will hear something that would look like
the sound of punishment, not people laughing or having a joke. It's something like would be awful cries. Ah, something like this. That's to indicate that somebody's being punished there. Somebody's being in a tor torment. Okay? So he said, no, Masjid, I can't hear anything. He said, verily, this person's grave, he is being punished. So he was Jewish. It doesn't mean just the Jewish or the Christian, the Muslim to be punished. Also the Muslims. Prophet of Allah passed by grave, two graves. Muslims. Okay? And he said, the, the people of these two graves are to be punished in the grave. Sahiba, the ones who are in the grave, they are being punished. And they are being punished for something that people consider not to be great. Not something serious. One, he does not clean after urination. And the other one, he is Namima. Namima slandering. Okay? So the Prophet of Allah, he asked for a fresh palm fronds to be put in their graves. And he said, maybe it will decrease their punishment until they are dry. This is only for the Prophet. Nobody is going to take now palm fronds and put it in the grave of his father or his mother. She died because, number one, you don't know they're being punished in the grave. Number two, the companions did not follow the example of the Prophet and started putting palm fronds in their graves. Right. Here, the Prophet wasallam has this specialty for him, which is that he could hear things and see things only him can see it and only can hear it. Like, for example, here in the Jibreel, nobody else can hear it. And this is from, I would say, the mercy of Allah to us, that we don't, we're not able or altogether to hear in general. Maybe one or two, yes, but not all, all of us, not, we're not able to hear what is in the graves. Prophet said that, he said, had it been that you will not bury one another, I will call upon Allah Azza wa Jal to make you, that means in general, all of you, able to hear what is going in the grave from the punishment. I would have called upon Allah Azza wa Jal, that is, to make you able to hear some of the punishment of the grave that I am able to hear. Okay? But this is the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. As I said, if we had heard these uh, sort of awful cries in these graves, I would ask, you know, in my will, please don't bury me in the ground. Put me in the fridge, put me in the freezer, but don't put me in the ground. I'll be scared. No. Nah. Hadith. Sorry, chapter 380. Abundance of friends entails abundance of enemies. Hadith 854. Qais said, I heard Muawiyah say to a young brother of his, Mount your servant behind you. He refused. Muawiyah said to him, How badly have you been taught? Qais said, I heard Abu Sufyan, Mu Muawiyah's father, say, Leave your brother alone. <laughs> Now, this is now, we find an older brother and a younger brother. The older brother is Muawiyah. And the father is Abu Sufyan, he is the radiallahu anhu jami'an. He's saying to his younger brother, okay, okay, put the boy behind you on the mount. So he refused. So Muawiyah said to the elder brother, he said, you've been brought up badly. You've been brought up badly, that means he's a father. The father is there. So the father is now saying as the, to basically to tell him, you can't really tell your brother in the presence of mine. Number two, he wants to show his support. The little son of his. He said, leave your brother aside. But listen here, he said to him, leave your brother. He did not say, leave my son. Because that would put hatred in the eldest son. Well, I'm your son as well. He didn't say, leave my son. He said, no, leave your brother. He's your brother. Leave him. Don't pick up on him. Okay, leave your brother. So that shows us, number one, the eldest son, he's allowed to discipline his younger brother, but not in the presence of the father. Or we should say, father, look at what he's doing. Then the father will tell him off. Number two, is the father is to be careful when he addresses the issue, not to make some somehow, somehow distinguishing between the the sons of his, and then they will feel, oh, he's siding with my youngest brother or my oldest brother. They will have some sort of grudge holding it in their hearts. Right. Uh, last one, please. Hadith 855. 
Yahya bin Ayyub related from Musa bin Ali, from his father, that Amr bin al-As said, when you have a lot of close friends, you have a lot of creditors. Musa was asked, what are creditors? He replied, rights owed. Right what? Rightful? Rights owed. Rights owed? Owed. Like owed. You owe someone. Yeah. Uh, rights owes, yes. No. Excellent. Amr bin al As, he said, this is another chapter, you've got no title for it. Now, when you have lots of friends, then you will have lots of ghurama. Ghurama means, uh, uh, you know, they are in debt. Gharim, okay, he's, he's in debt. They are in debts. So, so what, what do you mean in debts? That means they have a cook. So they are in debt. So you are basically going to, you, you, you're going to have lots of pork to give them. So they will be asking for more rights from you. Ask me about this. Ask me. Because I have you, mashallah, too many people. And every person here sending me a message with the mobile. I'm having a thousand message plus. So when I tell the brothers, please, Zakallah khairan, send me a text. Don't send me a recorded message because it's going to take time. If every person send me one minute message, one minute message, I will not be able to drink or to even eat or even to talk to my family, nothing. And also you have to as well keep, uh, uh, keep a closed eye if I felt, felt fall short as well of not answering you in, in time. But like some people, I answer the question for those three, four months uh, afterwards. It just I didn't answer a question four months ago, five months ago. I would say, brother, sorry for me, I didn't answer a question. But people have to be considerate as well, okay? And to ask questions which are beneficial, and that question which are, I would call it provocative. One of the questions that came to me, that this person asking me, are we as Salafi allowed to go make dua to the prime minister? Because he is in COVID-19, he's because of COVID-19, he is in the ICU. What a question. What a question. Wallahi, I have this question on my mobile. So what type of people is this? What type of person is asking that question? So brothers, ask beneficial question. Don't ask question that you, you, you know, where there's no benefit in them. It's there's something behind, okay? There's something behind, behind these questions. And this is one of the other tens of questions, many questions like this as well, Allah al-Mustah. So ask beneficial question and also bear in mind that if you have lots of friends, you're going to have lots of creditors, as they say. And creditors are like predators sometimes. Predators is like predators, subhanAllah. Well, but, you know, you have to be more reward as well, you be patient. But remember that, you have lots of people, creditors, then you're going to be, you know, basically in debt for them. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam, by which we finish, inshallah, this session, and we continue in two weeks' time. We will still continue with Allah in Ramadan at the time before the iftar, so seven o'clock. So seven o'clock until maybe eight o'clock. We'll give you more than half an hour, inshallah, for 25 minutes for the Maghrib to make your du'as and everything. So be in Allah to that time of the class. The class will continue, inshallah, in Ramadan because we're doing nothing. We are in lockdown. So we might as well use our time. We will talk about just we'll give you the class one hour, not an hour and a half, just one hour, all the class with the questions. So uh, class will be 40 minutes, uh, 20 minutes, inshallah, question. The question can be organized as, as done, mashallah, uh, by the brothers before. They were well done. And actually, the idea was our brother Hassan's. And I have to tell you, Hassan, that uh, Ahmed, he had uh, went onto the screen and told that it's your idea. So uh, let Ahmed, inshallah, go ahead with what he has done before. Now he's an expert in this. Jazawallah. Sheikh, can I just confirm with you, please? Is there a priority for poplar or not? Yes, there is priority for poplar. Put your hands if you're poplar. Okay. Poplar please raise your hand if you're in poplar. Poplar means you are in an area. It's not poplar, you're famous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Abu Ibrahim, go ahead. Please don't do anything to your mic. You'll be unmuted. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. I've got a quick question in terms of Athkar for the children um, during uh, Fajr and Asr. 
um, for the children, is it sufficient to say, they'll be protected till sunrise or sunset? That suffice. It suffices, but can I just ask you before you go, how old is the child? The child is, the, uh, the, uh, one is four and I've got twins, two years of age. Two years old, you can't say anything. It's going to be ah, 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 ah. But the four years old, they could make him to say this, but if you keep repeating for him, the four, you, you, you'll be surprised how much he, this boy, four years old, will memorize. He'll beat you. So if you yes. keep it, he will keep repeating the dua with him. He will memorize them more than you, then he will start correcting you. So say all of them, okay, with him. And let him repeat with you. So start with him and, you know, together, together. That's how I talk to my children. Together, together, and they will memorize it, khalas. Inshallah. I think people are shy. There's no questions at the moment, subhanAllah. Okay, open the question to everybody, please. Can you just throw out the hands of the person who had asked the question here? One of the people you have divided, yes. Jazakallah. Yalla. Go ahead, Faza. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. This is on I'tikaf. Is this okay? Yes. Okay, Sheikh. What is the minimum length of time for a valid i'tikaf? And when does one enter into i'tikaf? Is it at the time of Maghrib or at the time of Fajr? Okay, the scholars had differed. Is the minimum i'tikaf a day and a night? Or it could be a day or it could be a night. So if you are making i'tikaf a day and a night, so you come inside your mu'takaf, and that is after you pray the Fajr, before sunrise, and you leave after Fajr the following day. That's the four day and night. But if you make an etikaf for only a day, so you come into Fajr, after Fajr, you enter the etikaf before sunrise, and you come out after sunset. And the night you come into the etikaf before sunset, and you come out after Fajr, Wallahu ta'ala. Nazir, please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. Lower the hand of Faisal Ibrahim, ya khwani. Sheikh, uh, salam talqat. Fadl, go ahead. Can you hear me, Sheikh? Yes, I could hear you loud and clear. Yeah, uh, my question was out of the context before. Uh, I'm still context, asking for... Go ahead with the question. <laughs> the question? Okay, uh, the, this question is coming from a sister. She's a widowed sister and... Uh, Basically, she asked for help to her cousin to help her for her business in India. So they traveled together to India and uh, her, her cousin is a married man. And uh, he, ha by the will of Allah, he, he managed to help her in her business. But uh, something happened between them and they had a, a relationship and uh, he basically uh, made... Uh, this is a question of the private. You're going for a story now. And I don't think people will follow you on that story. This is a private question. You could ask me privately, inshallah, after this lecture. Ring me and ask me privately because this is a, it's a story. I'm going to listen to a story. It's a long story. Is that true? true? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's why I asked you the other day if I could... Yeah, but this question is not for public. Okay, I will. After the lecture, when we finish, take away, ring me up. Okay, on the WhatsApp. Inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. Khalid, please go ahead. I can't hear a word. Oh, no, you have to sort your microphone. Khalid, Sorry, Khalid, your microphone is not working at the moment. Mute him, mute him, please. And send him a message. Okay, Keva. I think I think you could able to hear me, Khalid. We took you off because we can't hear a word from your microphone. Not just me, everybody. Now, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Um, uh, the question was: um, Can someone be given a kunya that is a characteristic of a person, such as if you say Abu so and so, and it depicts what that person, if he has an attribute or a characteristic, is this correct? Give me the characteristics that you're talking about. Abu what? So if someone, if what someone said Abu Hakim and he's a person who was considered wise, is it correct to give him a nickname because of that? Yeah, you have to, first of all, distinguish between two things. Like the Prophet of Allah gave Abu Turab 
Abu Turab to Ali ibn Abi Talib because he was leaning against the Turab. And he gave the kunya of dhul yadayn, dhul udhunayn to people who are having this similar things. But when you say so, something to do with Allah's names and Allah's attributes, no. If you have, that is why, for example, one companion is, was called Abu al-Hakam. So the Prophet of Allah, he asked him, why are you called Abu al-Hakam? He said, well, the people, when they have a dispute, Hakam means judgment. Okay, judgment, okay. He said, well, Messenger of Allah, when people, they come to me to pay a visit, uh, to, uh, to, to dispute, to, to solve the dispute. So I, I, I sold, they sort out the dispute between them. And that's why they call me, okay, I'm the father, of, the owner of judgment, Abu Hakam. Abu Hakam. He said, what a good thing. What is the good thing that means people are coming to you to arbitrate, mashallah. But uh, do you have sons? He said, yes, Abdullah, Kada, Shuraih. Who is the eldest? He said, Shuraih. He said, you are Abu Shuraih. The scholars, they said that if the name, okay, it's just been used a name, it's no problem. But if it's been noticed into it, the meaning which synchronizes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're not allowed to be called. So if he said, for example, and Abu Hakam, because I'm just being called Abu Hakam, then Abu Hakam, no problem. But because they have, this is the cross from the attribute between, between him and Allah, the judgment, uh, he changes straight away from Abu Hakam to Abu Hakam. Okay? Yeah, Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, sometimes we have questions left over. So if I could just ask from last lesson, somebody's asking. Ask one question and leave another person to ask it directly, quickly. Uh, is it permissible to recite out loudly illness supplications or the kalima shahada when visiting a sick person or someone who's close to death? You mean the person who's come to, coming to visit the person who is, is about to yes, die? Sheikh. La ilaha illallah, like that? Yeah, he's saying that you say it out loudly. No, 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 you say to him, say la ilaha illallah. You don't say the la ilaha illallah. No, no, because maybe they're not paying attention to say it. Say la ilaha illallah. When they have entered upon a shabi, a shabi, the great scholar, when he's about to die, they entered upon him, and they were next to him. The old man came, he said, Subhanallah, none of you, none of you had made him prompted to say shahada. And I'm shabi. None of you said So as soon as he said, say la ilaha illallah, he couldn't say it, but he raised his finger like this. And he said, that means ashadu la ilaha illallah. So, you say to the person prompted. That's why you said, "Why you know, none of you prompted him to say the shahada?" No. Um, brother is asking, should he? Uh, no, should no, he no, refer go to the panel? I said, one question here, one question from there, please. Oh, uh, iPhone, go ahead. Yalla, iPhone. Salam alaikum, Sheikh. Um, okay, what is your advice, Sheikh? Before, before you ask the question, can you next time, please? We have said clearly on the text message. Please enter with any Muslim name. Is that iPhone a Muslim name? Uh, no, Sheikh. This is my first time, so I'm, I'm not very I familiar with it. You're going to be forgiven and totally forgiven. No <laughs> Thank you. But next time, because people, they will be saying, who's iPhone here? We're scared that he's going to be... I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll make an effort to Google how I can... Uh, oh, it's very easy. Is it using mobile <laughs> or using, uh, using a... a I'm using my iPhone, yes. <laughs> the iPhone. As soon as you come in, once you come in, when you click yeah. in, it plays to you the name before you click to go ahead. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. Tell exactly. Okay, sure. it. What is your advice, Chef? <laughs> what is your advice, Chef, uh, to a sister in the Emirates? She's sharing accommodation with a non Muslim uh, um, who she took in. Now, because of the COVID um, lockdown in, in the Emirates, the non Muslim who's sharing um, accommodation with her does some of her religious practices in the house. So, what would you advise in that in that case? Got an option before I advise her. Is she got an option? Sorry, chef. Has she got an option? Um, she she took in the non-Muslim girl because she was homeless and she was looking after her. The so question, I presume not. Listen to me. My question is: at the moment, is a lockdown. She is now ended yeah. up in the room with her. Has she no. got an option? No, she hasn't got any options. No, Sheikh. The house belongs to her. It's her house. It's the Muslim sister's house. 
Okay. Can, she got an option to take to to, to, to make her go out. I uh, I believe so. Yes. Okay. So you saying that she had because of the lockdown, she's not able to go back to uh, for example to the country that she belongs to. No, she was a uh, she was uh, she was homeless within within uh, the Emirates. So she took her in. Was that okay. She allowed her into her home. This, is, this sister is one of the two. Either she is a vulnerable sister that she will be listening to the kufar and be at you know affected. She's not allowed to you know look after her. Or she is mashallah good and she's giving dawah. Yes, this is very kind, uh, kind uh, kindness from her to look after her and at the same time to you know prompt her with the deen. Now you're asking me, okay. Is she allowed to, for her to make her ibadah? Well, she's allowed to make her ibadah not openly. Okay, if she's a dedicated person, if she's a religious person. No. But as also no. at the same time that we tell the sister not to stop giving her da'wah in the right way. Okay, in the right way, inshallah. Okay. So, the Prophet yeah, Sallam, yeah, yeah. it's not authentic that he let the people of Najran to pray in the masjid as has been said in the narration. But even if it is authentic, it doesn't mean that we let our masajid open for non-Muslim to start practicing uh, shirk in Allah Azza in our masajid. But if we are invited some people like this, for example, shelter, or people want to understand yeah. Islam, exactly, and they are listening, and somehow the prayer of theirs had come, we let them in the corner of one of the masjid, in the masjid in the corner, where nobody can see them, to, to do their, uh, you know, their ibadah, because, at the same, we're not going to tell them to go and bring your statue and pray to it. No, but their ibadah, without having these statues, they will pray their ibadah, whatever their prayer they want to do, their hymns and hymns, okay, on their own, without. Uh, and at the same time, we are hoping for them to become a Muslim. But we're not opening the masjid like this. Come here, guys. It's the day of Christians. They tell you, you're in ibadah in our, in our masjid. It's not correct. No. Yeah. Somebody might oh. tell the Christian they open their doors for the church when something happens to our message. That's correct, Jazalamallah Khaira. But what we do in their churches is the thing that we it is supposed to be done. That is to worship Allah, not to make Allah free. So what we're doing is correct. But what we're doing is wrong. No. The brother is asking, what is the ruling on him referring to his wife with her kunya? in order so he can hide his wife's name from the people? First of all, your wife's name is not a aura. Okay? It's not a aura. But if you don't like it, because Aisha, you got Aisha, you got Um Salama, you got Um Habiba, you got all these names. So if you want to have a kunya for your wife, for the sake of you don't want anybody to know the, the name of your wife, it's up to you. Jealousy, for example, you don't want to. No problem. But the kunya, have it for the intention of following the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah in order to be more rewarded. Mikhail, please go ahead. <clears throat> Salaam alaikum, Sheikh. Salaam alaikum. Sheikh, um, back to my question which I asked you a couple of weeks ago um, regarding a sister who um, wants to travel back to the UK from uh, Egypt, yeah, but she doesn't have a mahram. And the reason why she wants to come back is um, she's got her father who is very ill, uh, um, and she fears that she's got nobody who can uh, look after her. Yeah, what's the uh, what's the ruling of her to travel alone? Well, you just said to me, I'm going to repeat it, that she is in Egypt on a lockdown, and that's correct. She has no mahram. And how did she go to Egypt with a mahram? Yeah, she went with her brothers and her oh, mother. But the brother, I, I don't want, and I don't want anything else. Just with a mahram, I just the council with a mahram. So she went with a mahram. Yeah. And the mahram left her there. Now her father is her, her need. Now the brother of hers who have given her the go ahead. Isn't he available next to his father? Sorry, so I didn't get that, Sheikh. So the brother who is the mahram of hers who took her to Egypt, isn't he available for his father to look after him? He's not, he's not. Okay. If he's not and he cannot go because of whatever circumstances, not able to reach, okay. And it's only her she is able to reach. I don't know how, because even he did lock down. But if she's able to reach, and she's the only one, and her father is in definite need, and that's called necessity, not just need, necessity. He cannot go on his own because he's old, and the COVID-19 is hitting, no problem for her to go without Mahra. 
it has to be necessity, not just a need. Necessity. Okay. Okay, Sheikh, uh, quick, quick, short, short question here. Yeah? Helping a non-Muslim relatives financially, is that uh, allowed? That's another question, but I'm going to take it. What is it again? <laughs> <laughs> helping the non-Muslim relatives, helping a non-Muslim relative financially. Yes, of course. Even if you are non, they're not relatives, even if you help non-Muslims, like your neighbors, you help them financially. Just like Allah Khairan, he's a poor guy, he's a neighbor. You give him food, you give him money. He's your neighbor. This is, this is the way to his heart. Yes. No. Is it permissible to have Um something or Abu something as a name instead of a kunya, like the daughter of the Prophet? I think he's talking about Um Kulthum. Uh, basically, the Prophet وسلم, he had given names to uh, his daughters and also he had given names to other sons that belonged to his family like al Hassan Hussein he had given the kunya to them and also he had given sons to names of the sons to other companions so no harm if the person is called Abu something and Um something but this person is, has, has already got a kunya it's got no name so it's better to have a kunya and a name. Prophet of Allah's name, Muhammad. His kunya is Abu Qasim. He's got nicknames as well. It's Al Mustafa, Al Muhtar, and all of those. Al Aqib, Al Hashir. Uh, 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 uh. So he's Abu Qasim. Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So better to have, but have a brother, blood brother, who wanted to force the people to use the kunya for his sons. Because he knows that when the people know the, the, the name, they forget about the kunya. So what he did, that his sons, all of them, he named them himself with the government. So nobody knows it's in the papers. But he's given the kunya, even their mothers, she doesn't know most of them. She knows them by the kunya. Even I am their uncle, I didn't know their names until they were 15 years old. But when I knew the name, I can't really say the name anymore, because I don't know. So they said to me, you know, Ali did something. Who, I said, who's Ali? He said, your nephew. I said, I don't know him, Ali. I know him, Abu Umair. I don't know him, Ali. So I, I never knew that his name is Ali. Because he's, 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 uh, my brother, he had their, hid their uh, names and he put their kunya. That's a good way of making the people, you know, training them to the kunya. Now. Abu Asya, go ahead, please. Assalamu alaikum. Salam to rakiatu. Uh, my question is in relation to the hadith where um, a Muslim man does not die with 40 men who do not associate partners with Allah, pray over him, but Allah that will accept the intercession for him. So obviously, obviously with this COVID-19, um, you cannot have this many people bury uh, any Muslim. So is this hadith um, uh, in a sense that, that uh, people are missing out on this potential reward or how can we sort of uh, relate this hadith in this, in, in this day and time? Right, this hadith is authentic, first of all. And I'm just gonna, before I answer the question, what is Abu Asiya? Uh, what is Asiya here? She's my daughter. Asiya, Asiya bin Muzahim, the wife of Pharaoh, yeah? Yes. Okay, because uh, when Ahmed pronounced it Asiya, I thought it uh, means Asiya, which is means. Like, I apologize, I've done a mistake. No, there's, there's no Ain, it's, it's, it's a Hamza. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I thought, well, she's disobedient, your daughter. Abu Asiya. <laughs> La la la, she's she's obedient, alhamdulillah. I know, but I'm just a. So, <laughs> sorry. Ya Aba Asiya. Ya Well, the hadith is authentic. Uh, that's why when we bury somebody, uh, when we pray upon him, it's better to have, you know, uh, this person being prayed upon by a lot of people. But this COVID 19, which prevented us from having Janazah for maybe three, four people praying on him, uh, we say no problem, inshallah, because. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his knowledge, knows that if this person had to be prayed upon in the normal way without COVID, he will have such and such numbers. So that's number one. Number two, you know that when we hear about somebody who died, okay, if we know him, so we are witnesses already without the prayer. So the Prophet of Allah, he was looking, and the companions next to him, one of them, Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu. So Janazah passed. 
he said, Masha Allah, he was a good person. Masha Allah, Tabarak Allah. So the Prophet said, Wajabat, Wajabat, Wajabat. He's entitled to it. He's entitled to it. He's entitled. They didn't understand what he's saying. So another Janazah passed. And then they said, Oh, what a bad, evil person. They said, the companions. It's very bad he was. So he said, Wajabat, Wajabat, Wajabat. He's entitled to it. He's entitled to it. He's entitled to it. That's when Umar started asking, Messenger of Allah. We have the same words. He's entitled to it, entitled to it. When two Janazas passed, what, what is the story behind here? Prophet Muhammad said, the first one that you have praised is entitled to enter paradise. Wajabat lahul jannah. And the second one whom you criticized is he's entitled to hellfire. For verily, the angels are the witnesses of Allah in the heavens. And you are people, the witnesses of Allah onto the earth. Okay? So when we hear about somebody bad and we know he's good, mashallah, mashallah, tabar, we are the witnesses of Allah. He's good. Jannah is his. So the witnesses of uh, the witnesses, of course, are good witnesses, not the bad witnesses. So let's say, for example, a drunken person died, and some drunkards who used to drunk with him, drink with him in the pub. Oh, he's a good bloke, mate. You know, he's to drink with that. You know, that shahada witness testimony is not going to be regarded as anything, because they're testifying for him that he's a good bloke with them. So the righteous people, the witnesses of Allah on the ground, on the earth. So if we say that about this person, mashallah, that inshallah, as in with a prayer, as I said, that Allah knows in his knowledge, if it was normal circumstances, how many people would pray behind this person? Uh, the most important thing that we, we're going to be exempted from the sin, not to pray upon him because of this COVID-19. Now, Is the karma sufficient when praying the compulsory prayers, or do we need an do we, you're breaking up, Ahmed. Do you, oh. do we need, do we need no. ikama when we pray our obligatory or do we need adhan? Is that a question? The question is, is the ikama enough or should we make adhan as well with the ikama, Sheikh? Sorry for that. Okay, no problem. When the person makes his prayer in the house, regardless whether he hears the adhan from outside, let's say he's in a Muslim country or he lives in, let's say, one of those like, you know, uh, Bradford with his Adan outside or next to a masjid of East London with a naked outside as well. Even if he is the Adan from outside, he's praying in the house or even he's got a clock that gives the Adan on time, okay? When he makes a Salah, he makes his own Adan. This Adan is not for the time, it's for the Salah. So he makes the Adan and he makes the Iqamah. So if you are missing the adhan, no problem, your prayer is okay. But I'm just saying from now on, you make the adhan, hadith says, fal you adhan, that in prayer, adhan, and then make the iqamah. I was taught when I was a kid, just iqamah. That's it, Allah Akbar, Allah. Because why? Because the adhan has been called from outside. No. We we'll make the adhan and the iqamah. Now. Majid, please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. I've got a question on calculating the car on additional properties or land uh, and there are two use cases uh, the use case number one is if i have a plot uh, which is not acquired but the amount has been paid uh, because the housing uh, authority has not given uh, the the possession then what is the the zakat whether the zakat will be applicable whether it will be every year or at the time of the sale the second use case is uh, if my parents are living or my immediate family other than me Hang on, hang on. Just give one question. So the first question, you have a property and you sold it. No, I have a land which I, I paid, but I have not got it yet. Okay, you have a land which you have paid, which have got it. So you're asking, is there is a car on the land? Correct. Okay, that's, that's a car on lands, properties, houses, cars, all of that. No zakah with consensus. The zakah is, some of the scholars, or most of the scholars, they say it is an urul tijar, something that you present for selling. You have cars to sell. You have houses to sell. Okay, that's the zakah. But the other side of the scholars, I follow those scholars. There's no zakah except on the gold and the silver and the currency, the money. Gold and silver and the money. There's no zakah on rubies. There's no zakah on, uh, uh, what you call it, the... Um, Platinum, there's no zakah, lots of metals there which are more expensive than the gold, no zakah on them, there's no zakah except on the money, 
as for houses and all of that and trade and shops and all of this, those, okay, except for the money that you save uh, or, or the gold or the silver. And of course, there's the cattles as well. There's the trees, uh, the, the barley, and which is another category. But I'm talking about the money. Now, the second question. Okay, so just I think you answered the second question, but I will I will take the opportunity. So if I have uh, saved uh, some saving and I paid the zakat this year, and then the next zakat cycle comes, and then I still have some money from that saving for which I have already paid the zakat last year, would I still be continuing paying zakat on that as well because I, I still have that saving? Of course. <laughs> I mean, if they say I had the savings for 20 years, you're going to pay the car on those. Every time it's above the threshold, you're going to pay the car. Why do you say okay, that? Exactly. Okay. Right. Okay. So, I'll see you, inshallah, tomorrow, in a class which is in business transaction, in the in the afternoon. We will update you with that. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.